Okay. Uh, so today is the 29th of March. Okay, 29th of March. Uh, we have my class should be 64, but I only see at the moment 41 students. I have no idea. Oh, 40, sorry. 40 students. No idea where the address are. Never mind. Okay, so let me just show you the uh, course syllabus for this semester. Okay, so uh, what is going to happen is we our class is going on for uh, 14 weeks. Okay, 14 weeks. And you have several assignments or several assessments that you need to complete. Uh, bear with, uh, for your information, this course does not have a final exam. It is solely based on your uh, assessment, class assessment only. So you will have one or two, sorry, you will have some several group assignments and several individual assignments. So I expect all the assignments and all the group assignments to be submitted. Uh, failure to do so will result in your marks being deducted. Okay, so we have uh, one test and uh, one or two quizzes. Uh, so we will start our our assessment by having the first assignment somewhere in week five, which carries about twenty percent. Uh, what what does this mean? Does it mean one assignment twenty percent? Well, it can it can happen that way. Or I might just give you several assignments, which total to 20%. Okay. Then uh, after your mid-semester break, uh, week two, uh, lecture two, which is start, which starts all right after your uh, Hari Raya holidays, you will have your test review, and subsequently in week seven you will have an online test, which takes in about 30%. Okay, 30% of your uh, assessment. Okay, so uh, that will cover from chapter 1 to chapter 6 only. Okay, and then we move on to chapter 8, topic 8, topic 9, topic 10, topic 11. And at the end of topic uh, 11, you will have quiz, which takes in another 20%. Okay, so this quiz will cover from chapter 7 right up to chapter 11. Okay, so you have your assignment, which is worth your first assignment, which is worth 20%, and then you have your uh, test, which is worth another 30%, so that's already 50%, and then you have your quiz, which is worth 20%, so that takes in another 20 so that's uh, total now is uh, 70%, and you will have your group project, uh, which, which is in uh, 30%. Okay, uh, for your group project, I assume that all of you have already got your own group. So I will not assign any uh, groups or any, uh, I will not create any new groups. I will assume that you have uh, your own groups already. Uh, do you have your own groups by now? Can anyone answer this question? Do you have your own groups and how many number of students per group? Can anyone answer me? Not yet, sir. Oh, you don't have any groups yet, eh? Uh. Okay. All right. If that's the case, then I will create uh, several groups for you. And each group will have at least a minimum of three uh, to four uh, people inside your uh, students inside the group. Okay. So I will create the groups for you uh, and and uh, randomly. and Oh, maybe uh, we'll see. Lah. If I don't create the groups, maybe I will just ask you to create a group. Okay, I, I think it's better that way if you, uh, you create your own groups, okay? So, uh, let me get back to you on that. Maybe one group about four, four students or maximum four students, okay? I will see about that, okay? I'll let you know by the next class or next week uh, how many students per group, okay? So, yeah, the, so and that's about 30% of your uh, presentation, okay? So, this 30% presentation is also broken up to... Uh, you need to submit the report as well. So uh, your presentation will take about 10% and your report will take another 20%. Okay. So in total, uh, you will have 100%. Okay. So you have a quiz, 20%, test, 30%, assignment, 20%. Okay. So that's 20, 30, and another 20 
So that 70, 70 plus 30 is 100%. Okay, so that is your assessment for this course. So there is no final exam for this course. So it's much more easier for you. Okay, uh, please uh, look at the dates here. You have your entrance survey, uh, which starts today. So you can start filling up your entrance survey. Uh, it actually starts yesterday. So you can just start filling up your entrance survey. And then you need to do your SOFO uh, on these dates as well. Okay, uh, all right. So that is, uh, that is about the schedule. And you are going to have your mid-semester break on May 1st until May 8th. Uh, which is your Raya holidays. So that's about uh, another one week. And you will have another holiday, uh, end of May, early June. Uh, that's another one week, which is uh, Chuti Gawai. And inside Chuti Gawai, you also have your Raya Haji holidays. Okay, so that is, that is also part of it. And next, you'll have your quizzes and your group assignment. Okay, so group presentation, um, last semester what I did was I asked students to, uh, to do a video maximum of 15 to 20 minutes and upload this video on YouTube. So each group will present, will just give me the YouTube link uh, for your group presentation. Okay, uh, I'll give you the uh, format of how the group presentation should look like. Okay, at least you will have some idea okay any questions so far uh, before we continue for today okay so like like i mentioned the uh, attendance for this class is in new future uh, quizzes inshallah we will do it on new future your tests as well will be done inside new future uh, normally what i'll do for your test is i will upload the questions in new future on pdf format then you download the questions, answer, uh, and then you scan it back or you, you save it back as PDF and then re-upload again inside your future and I will give you your assessment. Okay, uh, your quizzes as well online, your assignment uh, online as well. I'll, I'll just email you or maybe put it up in your future and you can just uh, answer it and pass it back to me. Uh, ass all assignments are to be done individually okay individually assignments should be done individually there is no group there's only one group presentation and group assignment only uh, the other assignments are all individual and i'm very particular about the due date if i say the due date is on a certain date before a certain time you are supposed to submit the assignment okay uh, for this course we have to be a bit strict on the submission date and time uh, simply because there is no final exam. So we have to be very strict on the uh, submission date and time. So if I request the submission to be done on a certain date and time, so you have to submit uh, the report uh, within the given date and time. Okay? Uh, be it uh, individual or be it uh, individual, uh, group assignment as well. Okay, so thank you for those who just joined in our, our class. Uh, uh, bear in mind, our class uh, starts at 9 o'clock, so you are late by 13 minutes. Okay, so I expect by the next class, everyone should be on time. Okay, uh, please do not give me answers such as um, we couldn't get in, it takes some time. Well, if it takes some time, you should have started a bit earlier. Uh, okay. So uh, bear in mind, uh, next class, I need everyone to be right on time. Okay. All right. Let's go and see what chapter one has to offer. Okay. Uh, please let me know if you cannot see the slides or you feel the slides are too small. Uh, please let me know. Okay. So this is chapter one. Okay. So these slides, you can get it uh, online in the future. The slides that I present today now in class might be a bit different from what the, uh, the slides are in my notes. It's not that the contents have, uh, it's not that it's totally different, but some new information are presented in class. So what I need you to do is simple. Listen whatever in class 
and jot down your notes and just update yourself with the new notes that you find in our class. Okay, I'm not going to update my notes on your future because that is already uh, intact. That's the basic only, but you have to listen in class so that you can get more information about the uh, notes as well. Okay, and uh, I will also at the end of each class, I will rec when I'm recording this uh, video, and I will upload uh, this uh, lectures in my YouTube account, and I'll put up the link in the near future. So for your convenience, if you have extra time, you can go and have a look at it. And uh, if you need any more information, you can get my, uh, you can come and if you can just um, email or message me or whatever not. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Ifat, for joining our class. Although it has started at nine o'clock, uh, you are late by I think forty minutes. Okay, so principles of operating system. So what are we learning in this semester about operating systems? Uh, we are learning about what is an operating system, what is the difference between an operating system and an application system. So these are the two main issues that we are going to uh, look at uh, in this subject. What is an operating system? What is not an operating system? What is an application software? and types of application and sorry types of operating system so basically that is our main objective and that is also part of the objective in chapter one okay so chapter one is a very very basic uh, introduction on operating system so bear in mind that there is always a difference there is a difference between uh, operating system and application software so operating system is what we say as the uh, controlling system that controls your uh, PC, your computer. Or it's the controlling system that controls your handphone. Okay, your handphone also runs on an operating system. It runs on either Android or uh, iOS. Okay, so Android and iOS are considered an operating system. So can you run your phone or your PC your computer without an operating system? No, you can't. You need an operating system to run, to operate, to be in your system. Okay. However, an application software or an application system is totally different. Okay. So we go into that uh, as we go on. Okay. So what are we going to do today? Uh, in chapter one, we are going to cover several topics here. We are going to cover what is obviously operating system, what can an operating system do, what are the operations, and how does the operating system offer protection and security. Okay, so first you have to understand what is an operating system. So we're going to cover that. What can it do, and what is what are the types of operation? Okay, so besides that, what can it do? What how does it run? How does the operating system functions? So that we will cover in operating system operation. So once we have learned that, we are also going to cover how does the operating system provide protection and security. So you can imagine, let's just imagine an operating system is it's like a car. So when you say this is a car, so first you must say, first you will ask question. What can this car do? Okay, this car can go front and back, turn right, turn left. Okay, go front, go back, turn right, turn left, stop, go, and things like that. Okay, so that is what the car can do. But how does the car function? That means, how does the car move from a stagnant position to, uh, to, uh, to a different position? What actually happens that allow this car to move forward. Okay, so we must also understand what are the operations. What actually happens behind the car or inside the car that allow the car to move forward, backwards, right, left. So if you apply that to a personal computer, so now you have the operating system inside the computer. So what actually happens inside the personal computer? 
that allow the screen to be on that allow the user to access uh, certain files or certain folders inside the hard disk so what actually happens or what actually happens when you download a file from the internet and you open it or you install it so what actually happens first you download and then where does the file go it goes inside the download folder okay one it one it has been downloaded you, the user double clicks on it and the file is now running okay when it's running what does it have uh, what does it do actually is the file inside the ram or is it inside the hard disk okay in which location does the file go into okay next you have the protection how does the car provide protection to the user okay there's a braking system there is the uh, what else is that there? there's an airbag system so how does this airbag system function when the car hits a certain uh, object in front on, on a high impact the airbag comes okay same if you apply that to the uh, operating system each file is protected from viruses each file a uh, file is protected from certain types of users only certain types of users can access the file you cannot copy the file maybe you cannot paste the file you cannot do so many things so each file the operating system provides some sort of security and protection you cannot have two files in the same location with a same file name so that is also some sort of protection uh, provided by the operating system okay so we are going to cover that sorry okay so objective of chapter one describe the basic organization of computer system so when we talk about operating system we cannot run away from computer system so along these chapters and along the syllabus you are going to learn about operating system and the computer system because you need to understand this both only then you will understand the concept of operating system okay so some operating systems are in the latest design you can do more things as compared to the old operating system some computers can do more as compared to uh, the olden days computer system okay same goes to your phone some phones can do more can store more can it's fast or faster as compared to the olden days phone all right next we also provide a grand tour okay of the major components what are the components attached to the operating system Next, we are also going to look at many types of computer environment. Okay, there are certain types of environment. What does environment mean? Okay, environment means the computer system can be in different types of environment. For example, uh, let's say you go to the supermarket at the checkout counter where you do your payment. That is also called a computer where the uh, cashier scans each of the items. And each item appears on the screen so that system is also a computer system but that computer system is different from your laptop okay it's a total different it's a dedicated computer system only for scanning items okay that's uh, one uh, that's one example or if you go into let's say you have an operation okay the doctor scans your bones okay and it comes out on the screen so that type of computer system is different. That is a medical computer system only focusing on scanning bones and appearing on the screen. If you go to the ATM system, ATM machine, so that is also a different type of system. Okay, It's a computer system, but it's in a different sort of environment. What it can do is different from what the home PC is. Okay, And we are also going to explore several open source operating system so what is an open source operating system basically an open source uh, operating system is a free version of operating system so you don't have to pay for it you can just uh, download it and run it on your pc okay is what we say it's a free it's an open source and you can increase or you can um, change the functions according to what you need example 
let's say now in your PC, I'm sure you have Windows 10 and Windows 11 or Windows 11. So the functions which come under Windows 10 and Windows 11 are built in, are, it's already coming in. There is no option for you to, let's say you do not require certain files. No, by default, you get these files, these programs, Microsoft Paint or maybe the scanning uh, program. Okay, But in an open source operating system, you have the option to choose what necessary applications or functions of the operating system that you need. Okay. If you go back to your phone, when you get a new phone, it's already your new phone comes with several uh, types of function or several uh, softwares inside. It's already there. Okay? okay. You cannot say, I do not want this function because Android already provides you and there is no option for you to say, no, I do not need this, I do not need that. Okay? But in an open source, it's uh, you are able to do so and if you need more software you can just add on and on and the best part is it's free lah. okay but these days some open sources are also uh, you have to pay as well okay so what is operating system okay so there are five main areas that you need to look at before you understand a program that acts as an intermediary between a user, user is yourself, of a computer, okay, and the computer hardware, okay. So it's a user, okay, acts as an intermediary. So between you yourself and the computer, uh, and the computer hardware, you need some interface. Why do you need this interface? Because or else you will just get a personal computer and that's it. Okay, just imagine you are looking at your laptop and that's it. You cannot use any facilities or any functions inside your laptop. So you need a intermediary to access all the hardware inside. Okay, you need something to access it. Example, you buy a printer. Okay, yes, printers these days are all plug and play. But you still have an interface for you to print. You print from your Microsoft Word. The print properties come out. So you choose. You want it landscape, you want it portrait, you want two pages, three pages, double-sided. So there's an interface for you. Okay, So you don't have to do any code. You don't have to write any messages. You just choose what you want and it does it for you. Okay? So, operating system acts that way. It's an intermediary between the user and the hardware. What hardware are we talking about? Whatever hardware which is, is, uh, which is inside the computer system. What are the types of hardware? You have your ROM there. You have your RAM there. You have your hard disk there. Okay? Uh, you have your whatever. Uh, you have your network card, everything. All the Hardware which are connected to your PC is considered uh, the hardware that the user will use. Okay, how do you access your files inside your hard disk? You have the operating system which provides you an interface so that you can see. Oh, these are the files inside my hard disk. How do you create a folder? You use the uh, you right click new folder. You use the functions provided by the operating. Okay. So, by having this interface, obviously the goal is to make life easier. Okay, So, you now you have something easy for you. Whatever you want, it's all there. So, that's why you have the goals of operating system. Execute user program and make solving user problem easy. So, the operating system makes life easy for us. Let's say you need to use a calculator. Okay, operating system provides you with a function, with an application. For you, you to use the calculator. Let's say you need to scan a document in your printer or your uh, your scanner. So operating system provides you with an interface, so you can choose, you can activate that particular hardware, and you can uh, scan your document. Make the computer system more convenient. 
Yes. Because the operate, how do you access whatever is inside the file? So operating system makes, makes it much more convenient for you. You just drag and drop. Okay. How do you want to copy a file from one location, from one folder to another folder? Drag and drop or right click copy, paste. So it's much more convenient. You do not have to think, the user like you and me don't have to think about any sorts of programming, any special codes. It's just mere of plug and off. It's just an interface. That is why whenever you get a new phone, especially when you go, on, let's say you're moving on Android only, it's easy for you because you have started with an Android phone. So you know what to click. You know how to change the setting. You know how to change the volume, the sound. You know how to do everything because you have already gone into the Android environment. Even if you get a higher version, it's almost the same. You can explore yourself and you know what to look for. Probably you will find it difficult if you move from Android to iOS or iOS to Android. Maybe there'll be some differences, but again, you know how it operates. You know where to look for uh, the solution because it all uh, is almost the same. It has a settings button. You can look there. All right. So that is convenient to use and use the computer hardware in an efficient manner. So how, what does it mean by efficient? That means you have the hardware, you have the hard disk inside. So you use it according, you use it efficiently. You store your documents in a special folder. Okay. Uh, each folder maybe have a subfolder. It's much more efficient. Why? Easy for you to look for any files or any folders. You store your documents according to semester. And each semester, maybe you store your documents according to subjects. So that is also possible. So how do, why is it so possible? Because the operating system provides you a function to do all of this. To create a new folder, to create a new drive, to create files. So all of these are uh, done for you. So that is why we say the computer, use the computer hardware in an efficient manner. Okay, much more efficient manner. Okay, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and ask me here. Yeah? Are you all okay there? I hope so. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So, a computer system structure, how does it look like? So, a computer system, now we're talking about computer system, we're not talking about your, for uh, namanya, we're not talking about your uh, OS. So, inside your computer is divided into four uh, components okay uh, component number one is the hardware Relax. that's quite easy to understand hardware. what are the types of hardware you have your CPU you have your memory you have your input output devices you have your mm, hard disk you have your graphic cards okay these are all the hardwares which are connected to your PC Next, you have your operating system. That is also part. That is also a component inside your computer system. Uh, computer system. Next, what's inside your computer system? You have your application programs. You have your word processor, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, compiler lah, Java lah, C plus plus lah, uh, web browser lah, database lah, SQL uh, uh, Oracle lah, and then maybe and you also have your video games. So these are application. So what is the difference between, very important, huh? listen to this, uh, what is the difference between application program and opera, uh, operating system? Application program is a dedicated program only for one function. If it's for web browsing, uh, it can only do web browsing. If it's for mind game, it can only do mind game. If it's for database, it can only do database. It cannot do anything else. However, operating system cannot do application but it provides the functions for you to run the application. It provides the memory. It provides a structure for you to run the application program. Okay. So can you run the application program without an OS? No, you can't. You need the operating system. Only then you can run the application program. All right. So next component is users. You, me. So we are users. And Machines, let's say computer number one is connected to computer number two. So it's connection between two. 
or maybe other computers. Okay, so these are several four components inside a computer system. Okay, so if you look at your phone, what are the type of users for your phone? So obviously, you are the user for your phone. Okay, you can consider your phone as an as a computer system as well. If your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi, so the Wi-Fi or, or is connected to a modem router, so that modem router or that Wi-Fi connection is also a user to your phone. If you are downloading any information from your phone to your PC through a USB port, can you can do that right? Uh, USB on the go. Uh, okay, you can connect your phone to a USB on the go and uh, connect that into your PC. So you can download all your pictures, all your music, all your TikTok videos or whatever not from your phone to your PC. So that is the PC, the, that connection is also called a different type of user as well. Okay, so remember there are four components inside the operating, uh, inside the computer system, hardware, OS, application program and the users. All right, so all of these four components are structured in this way. So each user, or oh, okay, so this is your computer hardware. So this picture over here, this blue picture, is one computer system. So you have your hardware here. Okay, tadi ada hardware kan? The green one, okay. Then you have the blue one, the operating system. Then you have the application, which is here. And this is the user, which is here. So this is how the flow goes. So the user can access the application program and also the operating system, which is inside the computer. Okay. So can the user access the computer hardware? Yes, it can. But it has to go through the application program and through the operating system. Okay, example, let's say you want to print. How do you want to print a document from your PC coming up in the printer? So you send a request through an application to the print property request. And that request is translated by the operating system. Okay, so and so the user has accessed the print properties and wants to print from page 5 to page 10. The operating system access it. Where is page 5 to page 10? Oh, it's inside the hard disk. Okay, take that file and send it to another hardware, send it to another user, which is the printer for it to be printed. Okay, so what can an operating system do? Depends lah, how do you look at it? Okay, so these are several, uh, several things or several options uh, that an operating system can do. Users want convenience. User lah. Easy of use and good performance. Don't care about resource utilization. So you as the user, you want everything easy. Lah. You want it to be printing. You want to print, you want it easy. You don't care about any resource. Lah. What is the resource utilization? You, don't, you are not interested in how it's being done. You just want to know how you just want to print. Okay? Example, let's say you're using your phone. Your phone is also a computer system. You want to use Google Maps. Why do you want to use Google Maps? Because you want to go to, let's say, you or you use Waze. You want to find out, you want to go to KL from this point, you want to find out uh, if there's any jam. Okay. So, you open your application, click on Waze, and you see, oh, there's a jam. It takes about four hours. But you do not worry. You are not worried about how waste performs it. How waste calculates the four hours. Where does the waste get the information? You're not worried about that utilization. You're only worried about or you are only interested about the outcome. It's only for your convenience. Okay. Uh, share computer such as mainframe and mini computer. Okay, so you, we also have another type of computer system whereby one CPU is connected to several users. Uh, ada juga macam tu. 
just imagine you have one big main server which is connected to several users so all users using the system must be uh, happy that means there must be any uh, no delay lah, things like that example okay let's say example uh, when you go okay when you go to the bendahari office you pay something you pay your tuition fees ke, you pay your saman ke, okay so the bendahari will use a system which is inside a mainframe and this system is utilized by the whole Malaysian campus so you can pay your tuition fees also in KL, also in Shah Alam, also in uh, Terengganu, also in anywhere and so on. Because all of these systems sit inside one system, one big system. Okay, so it's much more easier. All right, users of dedicated systems such as workstation have dedicated resources, but frequently use shared resources from server. Okay, so what is a workstation? If you have been to the bank, okay, the person see him sitting down behind the, uh, the teller to the belakang to officers to, that is a workstation. A workstation is normally just a monitor and a keyboard. But the resources are all dedicated. That means they share the same CPU, they share the same hard disk, but they work independently. Okay, so dedicated, that, that is a dedicated workstation. Okay. Uh, it's as if you go to the library. La. You go to the library, you sit in your chair, so that is dedicated to you. So that's a workstation. But the books are all from the server. The books around you are all from the server. is shared. So whoever gets that book first, uses it first. Okay? You cannot share the book with another user because you are now holding that book. Once you have completed using that book, you put it back in the shelf, another person uses it, goes back to his or her table. So the position where you sit down is called a workstation because you are working there. Okay? But the books on the shelves are called the uh, uh, shared resources okay? or dedicated only to you. Handheld computers are resource poor, optimized for usability and uh, battery life. Okay, what is a handheld computer system? A handheld computer system is what you have on your phone. This is a handheld. So this is a handheld computer because it's on your hand. Lah. Okay, but the resources are poor because you cannot share resources. You cannot share whatever pictures here with another person. It's only dedicated to you. Okay. If you want to share, you have to copy over. You cannot share. Share means it is one sharing. That means it, there is no duplicate. One book share among two people. Okay, it's no duplicate. That means if the first person shares, then the next person cannot share. Okay, but uh, handheld computers optimized for usability. That means it's much more easier to use, but battery life is very, very slow because it runs on battery as compared to the computer system it you can just plug uh, to the power and then you will have much more power some computers have little or no interface such as embedded computers in devices or automobile yes so some computer system don't have in any interface or limited interface so what are these type of computers uh, computers well these are embedded inside your uh, inside a uh, car, for example, when you start the car, you see the uh, the meter going up, or you see the digital signs on your car. That is also another. That is also a type of computer system, but you don't have the uh, interface like how you have in Windows 10 or Windows 11. So that is another type of uh, another example of a computer system, right? So what is showing in this slide is what operating system does. Okay, so. What we are trying to say is the same operating system, sorry, the same concept of operating system looks differently in different types of computer system. Okay, so if I say Windows 10 works differently in uh, your computer, but the same 
Android works differently in your handheld PC or your phone. Okay, so both are operating system. Windows 10 phone operating system, Android phone operating system. Tapi Android mostly for mobile. Windows 10 is for desktop or uh, laptops. Okay, is for computer system. Although both are operating system, but both do different things and both have different capability, different functions, but both also work almost the same way. Okay, it's like a car. Lah. You have one car who which can go fast, another car, yes, fast but a bit slow. Uh, this car has airbag, additional functions. This car does not have an airbag. Okay, this car has an uh, electronic. A sensor uh, service. This car does not have an electronic sensor service. This car, kalau nak tutup boot, tekan button saja. This car, tarik saja. Okay. But both is a car. Both are operating systems, but acts differently. Okay. So these are some uh, certain examples of uh, computer systems which are available in the market. Even a photostat machine is considered a computer system. So this is what we say embedded. Embedded means they can only do one function. Print, I mean, uh, itu sajalah, they cannot do more than that. Okay, print, scan, uh, copy, copy, itu boleh lah. Okay, ATM machine. So the, the function is dedicated. A uh, main frame is something like this. These are all, uh, what you say, your hard disk, are all connected to one or two PCs. Okay, and a workstation on the other hand looks something like this. It's just a monitor, keyboard, but all whenever they want to connect, uh, they get the information, they will connect to a mainframe. Embedded computers in automobile is something like this. Okay, but these are dedicated uh, systems inside the uh, car. A mini computer is something like this. Okay, uh, it's almost like a computer but with limited function. Handheld device. Jadilah handheld device. Okay, handheld device. Ini kalau you tengok orang JNT, oh sorry, uh, orang JNT ke, or if you go to now, if you go to uh, handphone companies, uh, you want to get a new line, uh, macam ni lah. You scan your thumbprint pun kat situ, okay, you sign pun atas benda tu, okay. You can see uh, the courier service coming to your house, okay, JNT ke, DHL ke, they use this. They scan the item kat depan ni, ada scan the item, okay? Or if you go now to 7-Eleven, uh, Speedmart, when you want to pay through e-wallet, and they have that device kan, it's, or sometimes I think it's uh, orange in colour. So that is considered a handheld device as well. Okay? Alright, so definition of operating system, resource allocator, control program. So operating system will decide will allocate the resource to each of the users again user to sample you me another pc another hardware so these are all users okay os is a control program yes it controls all the program what program does it control any application program copy and paste any function in os will do this so definition of os resource allocation control program you must understand this Okay. Next, you also have several other definitions. Okay. No universal except definition. Everything is of a vendor ship when you order an operating system is good. Probability. The one program running at all times on your computer is the kernel. Okay. Yang ini kernel is a different definition by itself. Okay. When you start your PC, the operating system starts. But when you use your application program, operating system is there. But what is a kernel? A kernel is something inside an operating system. Ah, macam tu. Okay. A kernel is something which actually runs the operating system. Okay. Does your phone have a kernel? Yes. All operating system has a kernel. Android ke, iOS ke, it has a kernel. So what is the kernel function? The kernel function pula is to run the operating system. What is the function of operating system? Is to run the application program. Pula. Okay. So, if we look at our human body, what is the kernel? Is the brain the kernel or is the heart the kernel? Okay. 
Or if we look at the human body, where is the operating system? Ha, simple. Where is the operating system? Is the brain the operating system? Or is the heart the operating system? Because the kernel and the operating system is together. Inside the kernel, sorry, inside the operating system, there is a kernel. So you always have to look for it. Okay? So, an operating system is also called as a system program. Okay? It's a system program, but not an application program. Application program dedicated. Word, word, Excel, Excel, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. But how do you open this? You need an operating system. Okay? Alright. So, Okay, so we will stop here for today. I think it's a bit too much already. Uh, in the next class, we will look at how does the computer system boot up, start. Okay, so there are several steps that needs to be followed for the computer system to boot up. When you start your PC, what actually happens? What actually happens? When you start your car, what actually happens? Minyak daripada sini, masuk dalam engine, start the engine ke apa ke? Okay. When you start cooking, what do you do? First, you panaskan koli. Then, you put in the oil. So, there are certain steps until you start frying your fish. So, again, in the operating system, once it boots up, there are several steps that needs to be taken. Okay. So, we are going to look at this in the next class. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions? No sir. No sir. All right. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Inshallah, I will see the next group on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, three uh, a at nine o'clock. Okay, three a at nine o'clock. Okay, we will use the same link here. Senang je. Okay, we we'll use the same link, and I will share this link on the future, and I will see you again three uh, a on next Wednesday. Okay. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.